This video is to show you how to create footnote style references using a Word document for Mac computers. The first thing you need to do is locate the references tab at the top here and then you need to go over to this drop down in the middle. This relates to the style of referencing. There's many different styles of referencing. All that it does, changing the style, is it changes the way that references are formatted in your bibliography. For footnote style references, I'd like you please to choose Chicago. The next thing to click on is citations. It might look like a little book. It might not say citations underneath it, but locate the citations option and you should come up with a column on the right hand side here. I want you to click on the settings button at the bottom and then choose citation source manager and you'll come up with a box that looks like this. This is your source manager and this is where you're going to find all of your references for your essay. I'd like you to click on new, we're going to create a new reference and you're going to choose your type of source first. So you have all of these different options that you can go for. For the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to go with website and you can see I've got a whole bunch of boxes to fill in and by the magic of movie editing my boxes are now all filled in. So there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of when you're creating your reference. The first thing is if you cannot find a person's name for the article on the website that you've chosen, you can instead use the company name. So I've got the company name here, I need to click on corporate author and I need to make sure it's formatted correctly. Because I put it in the author box before, it actually changed it around thinking that library was a surname. So make sure you put it in the correct box so it doesn't mess up your formatting. The next thing, the name of web page. This relates to the name of the article. Now as you know, when you go on websites, websites have multiple pages. Every page will have its own title and so you, you choose the web page title or the article title. The URL refers to the link at the top of the page so you just copy and paste that in and then we need to fill in the year, month and day that the article was written. Now for some articles you might not find a year, month and day. In that case what you need to do is scroll down to the bottom of the web page and have a look and see if you can find a copy copyright year or a copyright date and if you can then pop that date in instead and that will be fine. You need to double check the example down the bottom here. Now if I go on month you can see it's actually saying that I have to write out the month in full so 04 is not correct and I'm going to amend that now. April and if I click on day you can see in the example it's given us a number one. What that's telling us is that if I were to put in a single digit I wouldn't put a zero in front of that single digit and I equally wouldn't put ST or TH for first or fourth or thirtieth. I would just put the numbers in and that's the same for the article date as well as the year, month and day access, which is what you need to fill in next. So this is the date that you actually went on the website yourself. You always need to make a note of this because as you know, websites can change at any time. So making a note of the date says to the examiner, when I went on the web page, the information that I've used was true at that time. Some of you might not have these three boxes pop up straight away. If that's the case, what you need to do is go down and click on show all bibliography fields and it's going to open up tons more options. You need to fill in the ones that have the star next to them as well as the name of website. So click on OK. This box that's popped up asking me if I want to update both lists, I'm going to click on Yes. What we're looking at here is a master list that's for all references across all of your documents on your laptop. The current list refers to just this essay. As you can see, I've only got one reference in that list because I've only created one reference. I'm going to close and obviously it's popped up now in my citations box over here. To create footnote references there's quite a few steps so we're going to go down first to the bottom of my essay. In fact I'm going to go to the end of the conclusion, I'm going to go to the insert tab, I'm going to click on pages and then page break. Back to the references tab I'm going to click on bibliography which you'll find underneath that drop down where you entered Chicago earlier and I'd like you to click just on that first box that says bibliography and if we scroll back up there we go the bibliography is in there and as you would expect it's got one reference in there already. Before we go any further I'm actually going to populate the bibliography with a couple more references so we have something extra to work with. I'm going to go back to the citation source manager 
and all I'm going to do is click on the ones in my master list that I want and I'm going to copy them over. So now I have three in my current list, I'm going to click on close. If I go back to my bibliography now and click on the down arrow, I can update and look at that, they automatically just drop in there in alphabetical order, perfect. Let's go up now to our text and I'm going to drop in some footnotes. The footnote number will always go after the full stop or directly after the quote marks. You find the insert footnote button in the references tab. If I click on that, it's actually given me a little number one here and that correlates to a little number one down here. The first thing I need to do then is go back to my bibliography. I'm going to copy and paste into the footnotes. Now this is important, when you go to paste, I don't want you to just press Command V or just right click and paste. Instead, I need you to go to the Home tab, click on the Paste button, down arrow, and choose Match Formatting. That will ensure that your reference goes in correctly. If you don't do that, in fact, I'll just very quickly show you what happens if you don't do that. See how it keeps the double spacing and it keeps the same size font that you have in your bibliography? You don't want that, so we're gonna undo that. If you do not have the match formatting option, what you need to do is input it as normal, highlight it, go to the line spacing options on the home tab and choose one. It should be on 2.5 if you've got it on double spaced, change it to one. You'd also need to change the font size to 9, but if you do match formatting you won't have to bother with any of that. What I'm going to do now is put in a few more footnotes so I can show you what happens next. So what I've done is gone ahead and put in an additional 5 footnotes which we're going to populate now. I'm going to use this second one right here and I'm going to do the same thing, copy and paste using merge formatting. When you cite one of your references for the first time, you simply copy and paste the entire thing. The second time that you refer to the same reference, you need to only copy and paste part of it. We call the very first time you cite it a long form citation because it's the entire thing. The second time we call it a short form because we're only including the author name, the year and the title. I'm going to do that again author name, year and title, and it doesn't matter what type of source it is, we do the same thing every time. If in your essay you refer to the same source multiple times and you refer to the same source twice in a row, you can use the word IBID. You should only do this after you've used the long form reference once and you're following the short form reference. So IBID means as above, so it has to be exactly the same as the one above. And then I'm gonna do the British Library one more time. And you can see because it's not exactly the same as the one above, I've had to put in the short form one more time. The last thing that I need to do is put in some page numbers. This one here, number two, this is actually a book. So I'm just at the end of the reference, I'm just going to put PG and a full stop, put in the page number and a full stop. And I have to do that every time that I use that book reference. So I'm gonna keep doing that, putting in my page numbers, making sure I put the full stops in. I still have to do it if it's IBID because all I'm doing is saying it's the same as the reference above. So again, PG34 and a full stop. And make sure you're consistent. So up here I put in a space, but I didn't put a space in for the other one. So I'm gonna take that space out. And here I need to change the formatting so it's not italicized. There we go, perfect. That is in a nutshell how you do footnote referencing. There are more steps to footnote referencing than there are for in-text citations. So I urge you to have a look at both videos. I would only say do footnote referencing if your supervisor has a special preference for it or if you're already familiar with using footnote referencing. Not because it's harder, but because there are more areas where you could potentially go wrong, there's more steps to take. And actually, in-text citations will probably save you a bit of time. But if you do get stuck with anything, or you have any questions at all, I'm very happy to talk about any style of referencing that you choose to do, so please do get in contact. But give it a go, see how you get on.